Today I want to read to you again from the epistle of James and uh, <clears throat> we're going to read this time chapter 3 verses 1 through 12, uh, James 3, 1 to 12. Uh, I invite you to join me as we invite God's Spirit to prepare our hearts for his message this morning. So let us pray together. Almighty God, we come to you in the name of Jesus in this moment with gratitude in our hearts for the opportunity to, to be together as your body, as your church, uh, those who are here in person, those who are with us online, wherever they may find themselves. We are grateful to be connected to you and to be connected to one another. And God, we are grateful for your word, your word that is so relevant and applicable to all of us, even in the year 2021, maybe even more so in the times that we find ourselves in. And so my prayer is that this morning you will speak to all of us through your word and through this message and just take away anything that might be a resistance within us and open us up to truly receive uh, you and your word today. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So James chapter 3, <clears throat> verse 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and it is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me see, um, <clears throat> have you ever said something you regretted? <laughs> of course you have, right? We've all done it. Have you ever tweeted something or posted something on Facebook or fired off an email that you wish you didn't? Because it's so easy today to post something you might later regret. And even though in some cases you might have a chance to take it back, delete it, erase it, the damage is often done before it can be controlled. In 2016, the, the US State Department tried to warn Americans against foreigners who might try to charm them into unsavory situations in a bar when they are traveling. And the tweet said, not a 10 in the US, they're not a 10 
overseas. Beware of being lured into buying expensive drinks or worse, being robbed. And apparently Americans were less than pleased with their government, government essentially calling them ugly. Because you see, most of us have this natural ability to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Nothing is open more wrongly at the wrong time than our mouths. And of course, there's no delete button when it comes to your speaking to someone in person. It's kind of like the stock boy at the grocery store. A lady asked him, can I buy a half of a lettuce? And so we walked back to the manager to ask, not realizing that, that she was walking right behind him. And he said, you're not going to believe this. There's this old bag out there who wants to buy half a head of lettuce. And he turned around and he saw her standing there and he said, and this fine lady would like to buy the other half. <laughs> Our mouths get us into a lot of trouble. And we're all prone to saying things without thinking first, whether online or in person. And so James in the Bible says, it's better to control your speech before it's spoken. Since you have to somehow learn to manage your mouth. So today let's look at how to do that. Now, to give you a little background on this passage, James wrote this epistle to Jewish Christians who found themselves in a tense situation. There were economic problems in, in the Roman world. There was infighting among different factions of Jews. There was this growing revolutionary resistance of the Zealots in Judea, which had put everyone on edge. And in just a few years after James wrote these words, a powder keg of violence would be lit when the zealots revolted against Rome in AD 66. It was a disaster, culminating in the fall of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple. And so James's concern is to, to help his brothers and sisters in the dispersion live with integrity and to represent Christ in a world that, that seemed to be going off the rails. And one of the primary concerns is the use of words. Because in a volatile environment, the wrong word can be the match that lights the fuse of violence or strife or misunderstanding. And so these words are very appropriate for us today, I believe, because it seems like, like our world is also going off the rails. And words are, are very significant, and we certainly need God's wisdom when it comes to our words today as well. So let me tell you why we must exercise restraint and watch what we say. First, because my words direct where I go. My words have tremendous influence and control over my life. We shape our words, and then our words shape us. And James says the tongue is small, it's tiny. And because it's tiny, you know, we think it's insignificant, but it really has tremendous power. Verse 3, if we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us. We guide their whole bodies. He's saying, you know, a small jockey on the back of a huge stallion can control that mighty horse by a little piece of metal strategically over his tongue, stuck over his tongue. And in the same way, our tongue controls the direction of our lives. Oh, look at ships, he says. Though they are so large that it takes 
strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. A relatively small rudder directs the huge ocean liner out there in the middle of the waves and the winds and the seas. And our words are like that. Our tongue is like a rudder that steers us. Your tongue is in many ways the steering wheel of your life. Your words direct where you go. So maybe you're thinking, well, if the tongue has such influence, maybe it's best not to say anything. It's like the, you know, the guy <clears throat> who joined the Trappist monastery. And for three years, he was given a probation period where he was not to speak at all. But at the end of each year, he could say two words. And so the first year at the end, he said, bed hard. At the end of the second year, he said, food cold. And at the end of the third year, he's kind of like about had it, and he comes in and he says, I quit. And so the head priest says, well, that doesn't surprise me, because all you've done since you've got here is complain. It's not a good crowd today. I mean, it's like I'm trying hard with my little jokes here. I don't get any response. What's going on? Um, <clears throat> In any case, James says, my words direct where I go. So I've got to learn to manage my mouth. Second, my words can destroy what I have. I think we're all familiar with uh, you know, the wildfires in California, right? In 2021 so far, wildfires have burned more than 2 million acres. Not to mention the loss of property and lives and livelihoods. It's possible to start an enormous wildfire with one tiny little match. And that's why James says, how great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. A careless camper can destroy an entire national forest overnight. A careless word can destroy a life overnight. And I sometimes wonder how many people have destroyed their marriage or their reputation or the reputation of another person or their church or a friendship because of a careless word. Your mouth can destroy what you have if you don't learn to manage it. It's like a fire. And I'm sure you've all met some verbal arsonists, right? Whose words are always inflammatory. So remember, you can burn people by what you say. And you can lose your family and your kids and your career simply by what you say. That's why it says in Proverbs, to watch over mouth and tongue is to keep out of trouble. And third, we must watch what we say because my words display who I am. In many ways, my words reveal my real character. It tells what's really inside of me. So James points out how inconsistent we are in our speech. Verses 9 and 10. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those made in the likeness of God. 
From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not be so. We say things out of the same mouth. I mean, we come to church on Sunday like today, and the highest use of your mouth is to use it praising God. And we sing praises to the Lord. And then we walk out and we get into the car, and on the way home we curse the driver in front of us. Isn't it amazing how quickly your attitude can change? In one minute you're saying, praise the Lord, and the next you're saying something nasty to someone else. And you know what's really sad? We do this with the people closest to us as well. We can be loving to people we love, our kids, wives, husbands, our, our parents, and the next moment be harsh and cold and mean to them. How is it possible in one minute to be talking to my kids in gentle, loving tones, and the next minute I, I'm being mean to them, and I hurt them, and I say things that, that damage their self-esteem? It's something that bothers me a lot. And I often need to ask forgiveness in my family, especially to my kids. And James says, well, we all struggle with an inconsistent tongue. We speak lovingly in one breath and then lash out in the next. And so what's the problem? Why is that? James says, well, we need to consider the source. He says, does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. So the point is, Whatever is in the well comes out in the water. Whatever is in the tree comes out in the fruit. So my problem is not really my tongue. My problem is really my heart. What's inside is what comes out. My mouth eventually betrays what is really on the inside of me. You don't have a spring that one minute gives salt water and the next minute fresh water. What comes out of the well is what's inside of it. Jesus said, for whatever is in your heart determines what you say. He explained the, the Freudian slip years before Freud even existed. He said what's inside of you is what's going to come out. And so my words direct where I go, and my words can destroy what I have, but most of all, they simply display what I am. They reveal my character. So how then can I manage my mouth? How can I more carefully watch what I say? Well, I think the most important thing is to ask God to create a clean heart in you. Ask God to make your heart pure. Like they say, you know, painting the outside of the pump doesn't make any difference if there's poison in the well. I can change the outside, but what I really need is a pure heart inside. Because what's in my heart is going to come out in my mouth. Like the psalmist, we should pray, create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. So you ask God daily to cleanse your life and invite his spirit to give you a new and a clean heart. 
And then secondly, ask God for help every day. You, you really need supernatural power to control your tongue. You can't do it on your own. We need supernatural power, so we ask God to help us. Speak the words of Psalm 141, verse 3, which says, Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Ask God to put a guard at your mouth. Pray, God, please set a watch at the door of my lips. Help me control my tongue. Help me be careful about what I say and how I say it. Don't let me be critical today. Don't let me be judgmental today. Don't let me say things off the cuff that I will regret. You need to ask God for help daily because you need his power in your life. Sidlow Baxter said, the proof that God's spirit is in your life is not that you speak in an unknown tongue, but you control the tongue you do know. So you ask God to create a clean heart in you. Ask God for help every day. And finally, think before you speak. How can we learn to tame our tongues to speak in ways that edify instead of sparking dissension and destruction? We need to engage the brain and the spirit before we engage the tongue. Engage your mind before you put your tongue in gear. Professor Alan Jacobs of Baylor University offers great advice for how to repair the connection between the brain and the tongue. He says, when someone posts an outrageous tweet, you know, we're prone to wonder, what were they thinking? Chances are they weren't thinking. He says, we all need to relearn how to think before we engage the process of how to speak. He says, be slow when you're tempted to respond quickly, instead, give it five minutes. Take a walk. Make dinner. Do some deep breathing. Get your body involved. He says when our bodies are moving, our brains tend to have time to process. Forgo the need for an instant response to that nasty email or that idiotic tweet or post. Consider not responding at all. Like someone sarcastically posted on one of my WhatsApp groups this past week. Life is short. Make sure you spend as much time as you can arguing with unhappy strangers about politics and vaccinations on the internet today. Good and wise thinkers focus on thinking and responding about the right things, not about everything. And no wonder James says earlier in his letter, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. So the question is, what does your tongue say about you? What does my tongue say about me? What do our words and our posts and our responses reveal about us? If we were to play back a tape of, of every conversation you've had in this past week, I mean, what would we learn about you? God hears it all. So ask God for a clean and pure heart. 
and ask him to help you every day and every moment and think before you speak. This was written on a tombstone somewhere. Here lies Arabella Young, who on the 12th of May began to hold her tongue. I hope you and I don't have to wait that long. Amen. Most holy God, in this moment we all confess that this is one of the most difficult things in our lives, to manage our mouths. So often we say the wrong thing, so often we hurt instead of build up with our words. We confess, we seek forgiveness, and we pray that you will help us every day to put that God over our mouths, to help us to engage our brain before we put our mouths in gear, that your Spirit will create in us a clean and pure heart, because that's the source of it all. It's what's going on inside of us. And we know that you can purify our lives and our hearts, and your Spirit can put a new spirit within us. Help us as members of this church and members of this community to build up with our words, to encourage with our words, to think before we speak instead of causing division and tearing down and insulting and hurt one another. We need your help, God, and we seek your help. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen.